Alright everybody, if the previous video seemed to have cut off at a weird point, uh, that's because I did some testing of uh, how to properly bake out the normals for a model, for this model, given how many pieces it has, and uh, I decided to change my tactics here. So I have these, uh, or at least change them from what I had originally planned to do for this particular series. So as you see, I have here uh, all of my UV shells packed inside of this one square, but I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to take the I'm going to take the fins. So hold on, let me grab mark seams, and I'm going to make sure my selection is on islands. I'm going to grab the fins, the proboscis. And um, let's see. And then probably the uh, the egg sacs or the gel sacs. I keep calling them egg sacs. They're not for eggs. So I'm going to grab all those, and I'm going to actually move them to a new UV set. And I'm going to call this extremities, like I did in the last video. Now I decided I'm not going to give this creature two uh, individual. U2K maps. I'm going to give it one 2K map for the main body, and then for all the pieces that I just moved over to the other UV set, I'm going to give it a 1024 map. So it'll be so it's a smaller map, about one fourth the size, but it'll allow me to squeeze a little bit more detail onto this model, and it's also going to make the texture baking process a lot easier. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm going to grab the gel sacks and move them back to... Ah. I'm going to grab those gel sacks, come on, and move them back to... There we go. So these three shells are going to take up this 1024 map. And then I'll go here and I'll really quickly hit pack UV. So basically it's just going to move these islands around in order to fill this space as best as possible. There we go. Now it also, what's cool about this is that it will also try to preserve the relative scaling that you had. So as you saw, the shell I had for the underside of the belly here was a bit smaller than everything because we're not going to be seeing it as much. And the gel sacs were a little bit bigger because they have that and the top of the mouth were bigger because they were going, they have a lot more detail on them and I want to make sure that that detail is captured inside of the UV map. Now I might take some of these and make them a little bit bigger still because there is still a bit of empty space here that I can use to try and pack these as efficiently as possible. Alright, so let's start um, baking the textures out. So we're going to end up with two normal map textures, one for the body and then one for the extremities. So to do that, I'm going to bake out the main body first. So one thing I want to do is I want to hide the fins and the proboscis because I don't want those any in any way interfering with uh, the main body. So I'll go ahead and I will, where are they? I will hide those three. And then I'll also hide those, the fin and the proboscis retopo objects. So now I just have to bake out this main body. So if I go up to bake, bake with normal map per pixel. So the way this is going to work is that it's going to project the mesh outwards along the vertex normals. So if I increase this outward projection, you'll see the mesh gets kind of bloated. And that's exactly the kind of behavior that we want. 
except I might not want it on the teeth per se. I'm gonna grab the teeth. Oh, whoops. And I'm gonna move them to the extremities and then really quickly I'm gonna go there and All right, I'll hide all three of those and then also hide the uh, the upper and lower teeth. And let's get back to baking this by itself. So bake, normal map per pixel. I'm gonna increase the outward scan to about five. Now the rule of thumb here is that, in case you don't fully understand exactly what's happening, the rule of thumb is that when you're checking the outer shell, you want to make sure that you can't see any part of the internal, of the actual high-res model. That the only thing you can see is the retopology mesh. And when you're previewing the inner shell, the exact opposite is true. You want to only be able to see your high-resolution mesh and your retopology mesh should be completely encased inside of your uh, high resolution mesh. So with the inside depth you see we have quite a few problems. I'm going to increase the depth a little bit more to try and get rid of most of these. Alright, that seems to be doing pretty well, but there are still a few problem areas. Notably, the teeth. Now as you see, what's happening here is that because this section is so narrow, the the mesh is actually being pushed from one side all the way through and then out the other side. So what we need to do is we need to add what's known as a sphere of influence. So if I hit add zone, we get this big ball. I'm not sure why it's so large, but uh, if I reduce the radius of that to maybe 15, and if I hit pick zone, I can choose where I want to place it which will be right there at the end of the tooth, and then I have to change the radius again, apparently. And what you can do is you can set a unique scan depth for only inside of this sphere. So in this case, I need the in-depth to be a lot lower, so like maybe 1.5. There we go, perfect. And I'll do that to the three other teeth. Great. I'll also do something similar here to the uh, to this bit of connective tissue. Okay. And then a few other problem areas are like here behind the gel sacs. So I'll take the biggest offenders like this one. And now we need to actually increase the scan depth. All right. So then once we have this set up, I hit OK. And then it's going to ask us if we want to bake local occlusion. We don't want to do that in this step because you can do that in the, uh, the paint room once we're texturing this. So I'm going to hit no, and then I'll hit OK, and it's going to ask me for a few options. It's going to ask for a few presets and information about the normal map that we're making. So the UV set name, I'm going to name this to body, and then the size is going to be 2048. Now hit OK. Then it's going to bake everything based on the scan settings that we provided it. There we go. Nothing changed. So if we go to the paint room, we can now see our low resolution mesh, but things are a little weird. We need to make sure we actually hide, we can still see the voxel and high resolution objects here in the paint room, even though that's not what we want to see. So to see what your low resolution mesh looks like on its own, we need to make sure that we hide the root voxel object. That will hide all our high-resolution meshes. And this is our low-resolution object. 